In my everyday object scene, I created these plastic bottles with liquid inside and I said that I would show you how to do them. This is a blender tip for relative beginners and it's very easy to do. So here's how we can do this. Now there's more than one way to do this. So I'll just show you uh, one of my favorite ways. All right, so here I am in Blender, uh, got nothing in the scene, and I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh Cylinder, and I'm going to reduce the vertices to something reasonable, like let's say 16 or 18 is fine. Press 1 to look from the front, hold down Control and pull and snap it to the X, to the floor. All right, go into Edit Mode by pressing Tab 3 for face selection and grab that front face, that top face. Press 1 to look from the front and pull this up so it's like a like a bottle so I'm going to do it to that point and then I'm going to hit E to extrude and I'm going to pull it up again maybe to that division there and then S to scale it down maybe I'll pull it down just a little bit and make a little width that you want the neck of your bottle to be so I'm going to scale it down just a little bit more and I'm going to press E to extrude and I'm going to come up a little bit more and the cap is going to fit over that, so we don't really have to worry too much about the details there. So I'm going to press X and delete that face. So here's our bottle so far. Now let's round this off. Press 3 for face selection and select that bottom face. And we're going to bevel this by pressing Control B and pull. And give yourself a little space like this and roll your mouse up. Maybe just once is fine. Now you can do stuff on the bottom where you push it up if you want to. I'm not going to do that though. So we've done that. Let's press Alt A to deselect, two for edge selection, Shift and Alt and click and that'll get that whole edge all the way around. Let's bevel this so there's a nice transition from this straight part to this angled part. Control B, pull until it starts to look nice like a bottle like that. And then let's add maybe one, two more Segment. So I've got a total of, of five ed edges going around there. All right, deselect that, come up and shift alt and click there. Control B, pull, but I don't know if I want five. I might be able to get away with, well, I think I will keep it at five to go like that. All right, we'll come back to the top in a moment. We are going to have a label on here. We'll do that in a moment, but first let's put a little bit of detail down here all right just to give our, our our bottle or whatever a little bit more character let's press Control r pull an edge loop down near near the bottom like that and Control b to bevel and pull and i want to have i think three edges just spread them out a little bit like this so i can put my label here and i've got three edges going around deselect Shift Alt and click these. I'm holding Shift and Alt and I clicked all three of those. I'm going to bevel those again. Control B, pull, but roll back to zero so that I have just a space like this. And now we're going to E and Alt S and pull to pull those in like this. A little ways like that. It's trial and error to decide how much you have to pull in. Okay, let's deselect. We'll come back in a bit. Now let's just have a look at this. I think we're good for the bottle, so let's go back into object mode and try Control 2. That's the same as coming over here and putting on two subdivisions. You may be able to get away with just one. Let's shade smooth, and here's what we have. So we have a little bit of an indent. Now what you may want to do is go back into edit mode and Control R, bring an edge loop down a little bit closer to here just to get this a bit sharper. I don't want these sharp, I want them pretty round. I may put one more down here as well. Right here and just about there. As it gets closer to there, it reduces the stretching, but I don't want it too close. I still want it nice and smooth like that. All right, so there's there's my bottle. Now let's just have a look at this with just one subdivision. It's almost the same. I'm gonna leave it at one for now. I'll go ahead and turn on statistics as well and you can see. Now this is not gonna be low, low poly or anything, but it's gonna be fine. Now, 
at that point the bottle is just about finished we'll give it some thickness but I want to think about the liquid that's going to be inside it's easier to do it now so there's the bottle I'm going to rename this bottle I'm going to duplicate this by pressing shift D there's my duplicate that's going to be the liquid inside and I'm going to press S to scale and hold down shift and pull it so that it's inside the other part we can come back and adjust this in a bit but with that selected I'm going to go into edit mode press Z for wireframe A and I can see my bottle on the inside I may have to scale that a little bit more so that it's definitely inside and I'm going to use this to make the liquid I'm going to press 1 for vertex selection and B for border or box selection and I think I'll go back into face selection number three and just X faces and now what I have let's let's see if we can look through this thing is we have this part here that could represent the liquid I'm going to shift alt and click that edge and I'm going to pull it down so that my label is here and the liquid is underneath the label it's not right at the same level as the top of my label or anything all right I'm gonna press F to make a face on that liquid now I've got a subdivision on that I'm gonna turn that off I might use it I might not control B to bevel pull something like that maybe and I'm gonna roll my mouse up one and stop there and we'll see how well that turns out for us all right so we've got the bottle we've got the liquid just before we do the cap let's give this some thickness I'm going to add solidify I'm going to turn off the subdivision for the moment and I'm going to come up here and look and decide how thick I want I think I want it a little bit more thick than that so I'm holding shift and I'm pulling to the right get a thickness you want don't go too crazy with it I've got 0 0.02 here and that looks okay to me I'm gonna press Control a while I hover over it to apply that and I don't really need to bevel these edges off because they're gonna be hidden by the cap so I'm not going to do that right now I can go ahead and turn that back on um, if that bothers you you can go ahead it's not gonna add that much you can hold shift and alt and click both of these edges Control B looks like I am beveling and you can do that and uh, it'll look a little bit nicer all right so okay so now let's make the cap to do that let's take a circle here let's hold shift alt and click all right we have got that circle right there shift d s to scale pull it out bring it to about there but we want to separate it from the bottle at least i want to separate it so press p enter and go back into object mode and then select that tab to go into edit mode one for vertex selection i just find it easier to see and work in that I'm going to turn off the subdivision for now we may or may not be using that and I'm going to press E to extrude and I'm going to pull it up to make the cap I just want to think about how far it goes down is going to look natural I think it looks pretty good like that all right I'm going to press F to make a face three for face selection so I've got that selected and I'm going to bevel that control B and pull pull something like that and have maybe three in there um, what I like to do for the bottom of the cap if you're not going to look in is press 2 for edge selection select that E and S and just pull it in you're not going to really look up the neck of the bottle and then select that edge and do the same beveling something like that now we need to look and make sure our polys are all facing the right way so I'm going to come over here and you see and the, as you can see the cap is red so we're going to select that go into edit mode select it all alt n and recalculate outside deselect and now everybody is facing the right way so there's our cap we can shade smooth we can turn on su um, subdivision and I think I'm probably going to do it that way although I'm not sure now another thing I like to do is I've got an edge loop right here and I have another one down here I may shift alt and click this one and I may pull it up just a little bit like that sort of match the distance there and I want to do something to help us uh, 
turn this uh, turn this cap off of so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift alt and click here and grab all these faces so I want to face selection shift alt and click right there and I'm going to inset this a bit I'm gonna press E and alt s and pull it in like this it's a little frustrating with that on there so we're gonna get rid of that and then I'm going to add an edge loop and pull it up and an edge loop and pull it down now these edges look a little sharp but I think with the subdivision they'll smooth out a little bit and I'm gonna put some what seems like thread on there to help help us turn so to to get a new object in that position I'm going to select all these faces so I'm in three face selection shift alt and click there so I've got that I'm gonna bring my 3d cursor there by pressing shift s and then choosing cursor to select it and I'm going to go back into object mode now we're gonna make that thread stuff all right shift a mesh circle and then choose a number that's you know higher than 32 let's go something like 44 something we probably never ever used before go into edit mode one for vertex selection s to scale and scale in and around the size of that cap pull it down to about there and then extrude it up to about there all right deselect press 2 for edge selection shift alt and click there e and s and just pull it in do the same thing at the bottom shift alt and click e and s and pull it in now let's take these sharp edges shift alt and click both of those and we'll bevel them together control b pull and again i'm going for three segments in total one two three all around on both sides so i have this now press 3 for face selection shift alt and click here and get those faces now we're going to use the inset tool press i twice i i hold shift and pull in until you start getting that separation go to about there then press e alt s and pull and that will pull them out always don't go out like that just a little bit and if you don't like how far you did control z and do it again i'm going to go with that i hope that's okay now you can switch to individual origins and press s and do stuff like that maybe i'll do that just don't forget to come back all right so i've got that i'm going to come over to bevel modifier bevel i'm going to go for two subdivisions and leave it probably on its default settings go back into edit mode select it all in s to scale just pull it in a little bit more just like that and then maybe sz and pull it up just to fill that space and see what you think you're probably not going to zoom right in on it but you know if you're going to be kind of close just position this where you like it maybe down a bit and sz all right something like that is probably okay it's going to end up looking like that all right so what i'm going to do is if i'm happy with that i'm going to apply this bevel control a and I'm gonna look at my cap and say, hmm, not the nicest cap I've ever made. It's looking a little bit too, too round. I might take this edge and S, pull it out a little bit. Eh, not really worth futzing over. So I'm going to apply this. I'm just gonna put a simple material on this. So I'm gonna control A, shift that and click on that and control J. And I've got my cap. All right, I've got my cap let's name that cap I've got my bottle and I've got my liquid on the inside we don't have a label yet we don't have material so we're gonna do that right now I'm gonna select the cap I'm gonna go into the shading tab here and I'm gonna switch my HDR to this one that's gonna I think let make the, the bottle look a bit better I'm gonna click on new for a new material and I'm gonna call this cap and all I'm going to do for this is I'm going to change the base color. I'm going to lower it a little bit so it's a little bit less intense. And this, this is a plastic kind of bottle. I'm going to bring the roughness down. And I'm going to bring the clear coat up to 0 0.3. It's nice and shiny and reflecting. And I think that looks okay. We have to look at the top. If we get that funny pattern, there's stuff we can do for that. But I don't think it's very visible, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, we're going to move on to the bottle itself press new we're going to call this uh, bottle and for this we're going to need to do some other node work so this is what we're going to do right here 
all right and so what i suggest you do is when you make a material that you like that you save it as an image like this label it and you know name the file something that you can find and put that in a folder for blender tips or blender tutorials or something like that and call it glass or clear plastic so you can always come back to it and 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 use it again and again now I'm doing this for Eevee. Um, I like to use Eevee these days. It will work in cycles, but this is what we're going to be making, okay? So we're gonna have our material output, which is pretty obvious. We're always gonna have that. We're gonna have two mix shaders. We use transparent and glossy on this one. Transparent on this one. These colors are gonna be all relatively similar. We'll use this uh, as well for uh, the liquid, I believe. And uh, we're going to have a couple of math nodes in there and a Fresnel and a light path. So let's just go ahead and bring in two mix shaders, transparent here, transparent there, and glossy. So let's do that. So we're going to get rid of the principal BSDF. And if you've got the Node Wrangler enabled, it comes with Blender. Probably most people do. But if not, just go to User Preferences and enable Node Wrangler. You can just go Shift-S to switch. And I'm going to switch this to a mix shader. So now our bottle is black. We're going to need another one of these, Shift D. We're going to take that and put that there. And we are going to need a couple of other things. So Shift A, Shader, Glossy. We're going to need one of those. I'm going to just duplicate this and go Shift S, Shader, Transparent. And we're going to need another one, Shift D, to another transparent. This one's going to go into the bottom. This one is going to go here. This Glossy is going to go here. All right, we're going to be connecting this to this. Okay, we're starting to get somewhere. All right, let's go back to the drawing diagram. All right, so we got transparent and glossy. Let's just double check that I did those in the right order. Okay, transparent and glossy. I've got them flipped here, so I'm just going to flip them. Sometimes it does matter. All right, just keep things consistent. We need to look at this roughness value here. All right, so I've got this set at 0.2 for the glossy. So let's change that to 0.2. Oh, that looks nice looks like a thermos actually all right so we've got our transparent our glossy our other transparent the mix shaders coming in we need a fresnel which is going to affect how the light bounces off this thing we've got it set at the default values of 1.45 so let's bring in that fresnel it's input fresnel of course you can always search for these things if you forget default values into the fact there okay uh, don't worry it won't stay looking like that and there's one more thing that we need on here uh, actually a couple more things we're going to need this light path and we're going to come out of is shadow ray and is diffuse ray and if you're not sure what all of these things are doing and i don't always remember either and sometimes i wouldn't know how to explain it to you um just just copy the steps and you know save the material and use it again and again and really no one's going to care if you're just making a a standard render all right so i'm going to have two math nodes in a row and they're just all going to be default ads um so let's go shift a converter math it's already set to add so this one i'm just going to drop in here and this one shifty i'm going to take that and i'm going to plug that into i'm not sure if it was the first or the second value i think it's the top one there and i don't think it matters all right coming in here and then i need one more thing which is this light path so I'll pull that over here, shift A, it's under input, light path, and we're using the second one. So I just want to see where those are going to go. Is shadow ray is coming to the first one, is diffuse ray is going to the next, and that will give us our glass or plastic material. That's going in there, and this one is coming in here. All right, let's double check that we did that correctly. Is shadow ray to the top? and did i connect those yes i did all right now if we look at this and we say it doesn't look too doesn't look too transparent yet all right well what we need to do if we're working in ev anyhow i'm going to turn on by the way ambient occlusion bloom and screen space reflections i'm going to come to the material tab as well for this material bottle scroll down to here to the blend mode and i switch that to alpha blend and that's what we're going to need. Let's go back to layout and look in material preview. We got our cap there and we have a really nice uh, glass or plastic and we have some liquid inside. So we'll work on the liquid as well. I'm gonna come back to the glass. I'm going to select all of this 
control C, click on the liquid, I'm going to control V, oh, click new. I'm going to get rid of this stuff and control V and call this liquid. Do I have that labeled already? No. Liquid. So we have a liquid and we will make this alpha blend as well, but we don't want it clear. So we've used the same setup for the liquid as for the glass because the liquid is also somewhat transparent. And now we'll change the colors and this is the fun part here. Play with these three colors. So let's just go for, I don't know, greenish. Pull that there and see what it does. Okay, I'm gonna do this one as well. And I'm gonna do this one. And you have some green. All right. If you want, you can adjust the roughness here to make it a little bit less, you know, transparent. And let's make sure that we're on the same one because that looks really nice. And a lot of this is going to be very uh, light dependent as well. Okay. So this is what we have. And it looks like a bottle with some liquid inside. And now we need to add a label to this. All right, and again, there are about three different ways to do this. You can use the UVs, uh, you can use texture painting, you can use shrink wrap, and that's the way I'm going to do it. It's a very simple, easy way to do this. So I'm gonna put the label on the front. So I'm looking in front view, I'm gonna go into edit mode, and I'm gonna press two for edge selection, and I'm gonna select this, this edge right here in the front. Shift S cursor to select, and that'll just make it easier for me to bring in my label or decal. Now I'm going to bring in a label or decal, and I'm going to bring it in as images as planes. That's another add on that comes with Blender that you need to have activated in user preferences, and you should have that because it's very useful. So I'm going to press Shift A, I'm going to come down to image images as planes and then you need to navigate to a label that you want to use or an image now it's easier if you use a png if your image is not a square image um, for example if i wanted this clothespin but i don't want the background this is a good way of doing it as long as this is not like a jpeg or a, or a gif that you know if it's if it's a png if it's just a square or rectangular image like this it doesn't really matter but i'm going to do this this way as, as you as you can see that's it's a jpeg right there images as planes and there it is it's brought it in like this i'm going to go into edit mode make sure it's selected rx90 I'm going to look from the front and I'm going to press S to scale. And I don't really want it going over these things here. It, it gets more difficult because we're going to be wrapping this around. It's, it's difficult when it's like that. So I'm just going to press S to scale a little bit smaller. And then I want this label to go on the front of this bottle right in this position. Now, because this is rounded and this is just a flat plane, I can't expect this to wrap around unless I give this more subdivisions. So I'm going to do that. With with this in edit mode, I'm going to press Control R. And you see an edge loop. I'm going to roll my mouse up and I want a good number of segments so that it wraps nicely. So let's try that. All right. It's nice and close to the front of the bottle. And I'm going to use the shrink wrap modifier to do this. So with the label selected, I'm going to press the wrench here, add modifier, shrink wrap. And as my target, I'll use the pipette or eyedropper to choose the bottle. And it'll start to wrap on there. Now, it looks a little funny. This particular label is very rectangular, but maybe we'll stretch it a bit. We'll see. Um, I'm going to adjust the offset, though. Uh, I typically use 0 0.001 so that it lays sort of on top. And I'm going to shade smooth, and I'm going to have a look at this. All right. I'm going to come back to one. I'm going to go to edit mode, select it. And really what will happen is you'll get this flat plane and the, the decal or the image is sort of wrapped around. And that's just the way the shrink wrap works. I'm going to try to SX to scale it in the X and see how the graphic looks if I stretch it. I'm going to keep going until it starts looking bad. It still looks okay to me, I think. I don't know what you think of that. This stuff is getting in my way. Um, I still think that looks all right. And 
yeah let me go back in here into the label I kind of wanted a little bit less tall I'm gonna scale it in the Z a little bit let's see if you think it looks okay then I'm going to so I'm going to just apply this make sure you're not on the bottle and applying the subdivision I'm gonna turn those off sometimes you can't always tell I'm gonna go ahead and apply that shrink wrap now I want to make one final adjustment on this I'm gonna go into the shading tab and you can see here let's go control plus you can see the material for that decal or label right here it's called floor cleaner product or whatever so there's the image and it comes into the base color and the alpha the transparent channel goes into the alpha now there, this is a jpeg so it doesn't really have that so it doesn't really matter but i want to adjust the roughness of this here i'll go back so you can see it as well and i'm going to switch this on the right one um, I want it similar to the bottle kind of so I just I want it to be shiny and I'm gonna put clear coat you off and you know on a nice label you know so that it's reflective and it's shiny uh, that kind of thing so it looks like that but it's kind of washed out and, and stuff and very light um, I want to adjust the contrast of this I can't work a miracle here but I can at least change a little bit so you can do stuff along this line here with the color so I'm going to press shift a color brightness and contrast and I'm going to play with the contrast I'm going to try 0.4 just watch the label and then it gets a little darker and I'll, I'll try even 0.5 and just there it just shows up a little bit better and of course it depends on your environment lighting and there you go all right let's have a look at the statistics relatively high again you could decide if you want any subdivision on there and on the cap if that was important to you what I would tend to do now is I would grab the whole thing I've got the bottle the cap the label and the liquid I'm gonna press M new collection I'm gonna call this bottle one and at this point, if I wanted to, I could just make a duplicate, a copy of that. There's another one. Keep it selected. New collection, bottle two. Oh, where am I? Bottle two. Okay. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select the liquid, go back into the shading tab. All right. I, I don't want to make a change to this liquid because it'll affect this one. So I'm going to make a duplicate here. I'm going to call this liquid two. And let's just mess with these colors. All right, let's make this one red. That, that, I kind of like that. The mixture there, that makes it orangey. Although the, ref the, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I have a new bottle here. I could take this and change this. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, make a new copy of this. Do that, that's okay. Label two, let's go in and find another one. Let's try, let's try that one and see how, how well it works. Well, it's not bad at that size. Yeah, and with all those values. And now I have two of them. All right, of course, my poly count has gone up. All right, quite a bit. One more thing that you can do if you want a whole bunch of the same bottles. All right, I'm gonna press Shift C to bring my 3D cursor right down there. And I press Shift A, come down to collection instance, choose bottle one. And I have another one, exactly the same. Look at my poly count. Now I'm gonna copy this, Shift D. Look at my poly count. These are all instances. I can still rotate these, and that's not a problem. I could scale it if I wanted, a smaller one. But if you wanted to, say, populate this and put them in a crate or something like that or have them all over your scene or you're making, you know, like a, a bar scene and you want lots of copies of these, you could do that, and you could individually rotate these or scale them just if you start playing with the original one 
you will change all of the others which is kind of cool we can all move together all right and your poly count hasn't increased by making these copies all right there you go one way to make a clear plastic bottle